Welcome back to Cryptos R Us. I am George. We're all George. So whaleish games or whale games begin. Bitcoin flash crash down to eight thousand on one big U.S. based exchange, and that is Binance. Dot us 8,000 Bitcoin went from 65 this morning down to 8,000 and then quickly recovered. Why did it happen? Well, let's discuss. Let's discuss. Thanks for tuning in. As always, smash the like, subscribe to the channel. Two streams almost every day, 11 30 and 8 30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure you hit that notification bell and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And check out all the latest news, article, and guides at CryptoZeros.com. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. You know it's bound to happen, right? Whaleish games and and liquidations. That's the whole point to what happened this morning. Last week we saw Bitstamp, another major exchange. We saw something similar, and today. We saw it with Bitcoin. Oh, I mean Binance. <laughs> Not Binance.com, but Binance.us. And this is exactly what happened from 65,000 all the way down to 8,000. So how could this how could this be possible? Last week, Bitstamp had the same issue where $40 million of Bitcoin was liquidated and caused Bitcoin to flash crash down just on Bitstamp though. But it did cause overall effect on the entire uh, space. And this morning, someone did with Binance.us. And it's, it's just a matter of this. Binance.us didn't have enough Bitcoin on hand to cover the amount of Bitcoin being sold. So some whale deposited an enormous amount, 40, 50, 100 million dollars worth of Bitcoin, and decided to dump all at once because they knew this would happen. They knew that Binance.us didn't have enough liquidity. As simple as that. And it will crash down. And causing many, many people to lose a lot of money. Especially, think about it, everyone that has a stop loss um, enabled, right? It's just going to go through all of that. Uh, luckily, Binance.us does not have uh, leverage. Because it's a US-based exchange, so there's no leverage. But... <laughs> Had they had leverage and uh, and, and uh, you had people using 5, 10, 20x, they would have all been liquidated. All, all of them. However, it still had effect. It still had effect in the overall market. You could see this is BDC liquidations. As of right now, you could see that is a big, big red candlestick right there. About 130 according to this site coin uh, analyzed. But if you look at Bybit, uh, their estimation, let me just bring it up real quick. Theirs is even higher in terms of liquidations today. So let's take a look over here. They are estimating about 300 million, okay? So this is what happens when people get too greedy and the whales decide to play their whale games, okay? Too many people thought that, yeah, now that we we formed a new high, Bitcoin was going to go straight up to the moon to 100,000, right? So they better put in some leverage. Uh, they put in some longs. 5x, 10x, 20x, 100x, right? This is why I hate uh, leverage exchanges or people that's promoting leverage on leverage exchanges. Um, and you know what? All of them got liquidated, right? Big, big liquidations today. Unfortunately, we need to see this in reverse. We need to see more greens here. That's the shorts getting liquidated. We need to see some more short squeezes, not longs getting liquidated, which is in the red, and long squeezes. We don't want to see that happen, right? I don't actually want to see anyone get liquidated. But if, we, if I had to choose, I would choose the shorts getting liquidated, not the longs, right? So obviously... It's starting. Whale games are starting. The numbers are getting bigger. The whales want to manipulate as much as possible. So you got to watch out. Don't be too greedy. Don't be too greedy. Even though Bitcoin formed a new high and we're sitting pretty even where we are now, like 63,000, right? Um, there's going to be volatility. It's not going to be a straight shot up to the moon. There's going to be up and downs, up and downs. So make sure you prepare. Make sure you take profits when appropriate. And make sure make sure that you don't 
over invest. Don't leverage, don't buy things on a credit card, don't uh, invest what you can't afford to lose. All right, well, Dan is getting banned. <laughs> All right, there you go. So Bitcoin on Bitcoin.Binance.us flashed to 8,000. But what does that mean? Does that mean Bitcoin is over? The bull run is over? Certainly not. Certainly not. Anyone that is panicking at 63,000 Bitcoin needs to be slapped in the face. Okay, because uh, we were just in the 50s and 40s and 30s. Okay. Uh, not too long ago. So at this point in time, no one should be doubting Bitcoin. No one should be coming up and saying, oh, it's another top, like some have called before, right? Volatility will always exist. It's the price of emission. But we know Bitcoin is unstoppable at this point and nothing fundamentally changed just because some whale games happened. That was it. That was it. Um, all right, big super chat. Uh, you are coming in from a large windfall tax free. You have over six BDC, over 50 ETH. Would you still apply 50, 25, 25? Why would you not? Why would you not, Ryan? It doesn't matter how much. You could have 60 BDC. You could have 600 BTC. It doesn't mean that the rule is invalidated. It's just a really good practice, based on my experience, to have the right portfolio allocation. And that optimizes, minimizes risk, and increases, uh, you know, uh, expose or gains, I should say, right? So yeah, it doesn't matter how much you have. All right, let's let's uh, let's continue on. Let's look at this. Bitcoin Archive have uh, tweeted this out. Last time Bitcoin's weekly RSI is where it's at, right around 70. That's when Bitcoin went up 5X. <laughs> From about 13,000 all the way up to about 64,000. And guess where we are right now? Everything is aligning up. Everything lining up that October was going to be good, but the really crazy months are November and December. Everything, all the metrics, everything that we have on, you know, on-chain metrics, indicators, technical analysis, they're all showing that Bitcoin is going up. And it's all coming to be right around this time frame, October, November, December, right? So where is Bitcoin going to be? 5X from here? Well, that would put it at uh, 300,000 plus. I don't know if that's going to come, but I honestly believe we will hit 100,000. And after that, we'll just have to wait and see how much FOMO builds among institutions. And there is a lot more, a lot more FOMO coming and retail investors because retail FOMO didn't even start yet it doesn't even register that's how low retail FOMO is right now but wait until that starts so good times good times are coming here's another one from tech dev using another indicator vortex indicator which measures basically momentum to the upside and downside right basically it's a, a, a uptrend or downtrend indicator and if you apply this to all previous cycles and all tops and mid cycles and bottoms, you'll see that it's pretty darn accurate. And what this is telling us right now is Bitcoin is nowhere near the top. Nowhere near the top. Well, what is top? Somewhere between 125 and 300,000. And that's why a lot of people think it will be around $200,000. 200, 225, 250. Many have already speculated this, right? But there's more and more data that shows that our cycle now, even though very different than previous cycles, is mimicking the same patterns as previous cycles. And that's a good thing. We're having the same mid-cycle tops. We're having the same lows, the same kind of corrections, the same kind of lengths, right? And if that's all true and we're mimicking 2013 or 2017, we are going to have a tremendous, 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 tremendous. Oh, screen share. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I screwed that up. <laughs> I was wondering why everyone is yelling at me, but here we go. Here we go. So this is what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, this is the liquidations. Okay. And uh, this is that, that, that downwick. So I'm sorry for those of you guys that missed it. <laughs> This is that nasty downwick down to 8,000 on Binance.us. 
uh, in case you guys are like wondering, what, what is he talking about? That is what it is. This is the liquidations, Bybit liquidations. I mean, they're all bad. All right, that's so, so that's, that's so you guys get caught up. This is the 5X for the RSI just got done talking about. And this is what I was talking about in terms of vortex indicators. Hey, regardless of my mistake, 10,000 people tuning in. Welcome guys, welcome. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. And in case you guys are coming in new, right? That flash crash was on Binance.us, one of the biggest exchanges in the US. And it's part of the whale games. It's part of the whale games that has existed and will always exist because they are there to make you lose your crypto because they wanna steal that away from you. Anyways, uh, so top is not here. Top is way, 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 way higher than where we are based on all these in in indicators and metrics, right? And here's a really telling one too. The percent balance on exchanges of Bitcoin, which is basically just measuring, uh, measuring reserves is dropping, 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 dropping. Okay. So you just put it all together, right? If you don't believe any of the fractal patterns or on-chain metrics or anything like that, you got to believe in this. There's a lot of buying. There's more buying than selling right now, which is why the reserves on exchanges keeps dropping. It's as simple as that. Supply and demand, right? Every institution out there right now is regretting not buying more Bitcoin. <laughs> they're regretting that they don't have a Bitcoin strategy Right. And they're all looking at uh, ways to get in, which is why Bitcoin futures ETF has been such a success so far. It's the fastest growing ETF ever in history with one billion under management within the first two days. Just think about that for a second. No ETF in the history of the U.S. have ever accelerated to that height that fast. Right. Why is that? Because everyone wants a Bitcoin strategy. Everyone wants exposure to Bitcoin. They don't want to lose out. Case in point, PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel, also Facebook investor and also investor in literally every single tech company out there, now comes out and says, I'm underinvested in Bitcoin, right? I don't know how much Bitcoin he has, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands, but even he has come out and says, you know what? I made a mistake. I should have bought Bitcoin. There was no, there was no secret, you know? There's no secret to Bitcoin. Basically, you buy and hold. That's it. That was it. And this is what everyone is starting to feel right now. Besides Michael Saylor, which arguably is the only one that's not underinvested, you could argue he's overinvested, but literally everyone else in the space is underinvested, just like Peter Thiel. And that is going to change after Bitcoin hits 100,000. I believe all these guys will just FOMO in. They're like, okay, it's too, you know, I have to get in. Everyone else is making money hands over fist, but not me. So I need to get in. And this includes all the big companies out there, the big institutions and family offices and hedge funds, right? And look at this, look at this. Houston Firefighters Pension Fund makes a Bitcoin Ether purchase, 25 million into Bitcoin and Ethereum. So it's already happening just on a smaller scale smaller scale right but just wait just wait until bitcoin gets to a hundred thousand and then it's gonna get really really wild and like i said retail fomo didn't hit yet either so that's gonna contribute right so bitcoin definitely going in the right direction um, JP Morgan argues that Bitcoin's recent price jump has nothing to do, has nothing to do with Bitcoin's jump. It's more, it's more because of, uh, inflation concerns and more and more people like Paul Jador Jones have come out and said, uh, inflation is going to be a real bitch in the future. <laughs> Not exact quote, I'm paraphrasing, but, uh, inflation is going to be an issue. When you have $7 trillion minted out of nowhere and given out, right, and increases the money supply by 40%, that's going to cause issues. Despite, you know, Jerome Powell saying differently, saying, no, 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 inflation's just now, but later on it'll take care of itself. No, it won't. No, it won't, right? And this is why, partly why, a lot of these institutions also want to FOMO in. 
why they want that Bitcoin exposure, why that want, they want that Bitcoin strategy is because of this, because of this. All right, Shadow, thank you. I'm sharing the screen now. So I apologize for those of you guys that tuned in earlier, didn't see the screen. You saw my lovely face instead. So that should be a bonus if you think about it. All right, what else is there? Uh, crypto miners such as HUD-8, of course, not giving up, only getting more bullish, decided to spend around $60 million to buy 12,000 new Bitcoin miners okay so why are they doing this because they already have a huge amount of bitcoin and exposure to bitcoin but that's not enough they are putting more towards their infrastructure they're holding everything that they mine and they keep increasing their hash rate their hash power that's because like everyone else they know bitcoin is the future and they don't want to miss out people are still saying oh i'm not seeing this chart i'm not seeing a chart Guys, it's on Binance.us. Binance.us, okay? Stop trying to fret around like, oh, I don't see it, I don't see it. <laughs> Even if you did, it's passed, right? It's a flash crash down, it's back, right? And the reason why this was done, because they knew, the whales knew that there was not enough liquidity on Binance.us. It's that simple, right? And it caused a lot of liquidations like you saw this morning right so that is what happened so people that are still tuning in and chiming in i don't see i don't see it regardless if you see it or not it happened it happened so move past it look at the future don't concentrate on the past think about why it was done why it happened right and then focus on the future um what else you know what I think someone is catching FOMO again. And who am I talking about? China. China. China is now pub calling for public opinion on their Bitcoin mining ban. So it seems like maybe China's plan was to crash Bitcoin, which they did temporarily. And then... Uh, now they're regretting that decision because since that ban, Bitcoin has gone up by more than 100%. When China kicked out all the Bitcoin miners, Bitcoin dropped to 28,000 and we are at 63,000. So is this a move by the authorities in China, China to basically reverse their course and say oh the public likes bitcoin mining so we're going to introduce bitcoin mining again i don't know maybe maybe <laughs> um but it, it yeah i just find this to be really 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 uh i don't know just really funny because the china fud brought bitcoin down so much caused so much fud i told you guys it's a good thing Bitcoin has become more decentralized. It has been become better since then. It has risen up in price too. And now China may be regretting that decision. All right. So that's uh, Bitcoin overall. There's a few altcoin news. Yesterday I talked about Terra and their proposal to enable IBC. It's been approved and now it's enabled. So now Terra and Cosmos can talk to each other and this inner blockchain communication is great because Terra USD can now be used in the Cosmos ecosystem. And anything in Cosmos, uh, any of their dApps and coins uh, can be used in Terra's ecosystem. And the two can just talk to each other. And this is the whole point of Cosmos to be, you know, basically like a, a, a Cosmos of dApps and have them all talk to each other. And now it's starting to come true. I'm waiting for Binance Smart Chain to enable IBC because Binance Smart Chain is also built with the Cosmos SDK and they could also enable IBC if they wanted to. Imagine that. Then you have Binance Smart Chain dApps and Terra dApps and Cosmos dApps all talking to each other. That would be tremendous. That would be tremendous. What else is there? IOTA. IOTA released a big news this morning saying that they are ready. They're on their way with their brand new chain and they will be bringing smart contracts with basically zero fees. And 
interoperable with Ethereum. So IOTA is making a big change. They're removing the coordinator node. They're making their new chain more focused on smart contracts so that they can, you know, get involved with dApps and DeFi and NFTs, right? Uh, it's a long time coming. People have been waiting for this for a long time and it is nearing. So they just released this is big news. Lastly, lastly, little little bear news. Scott Miner, who recently came out and said he does, he's all out. He doesn't understand crypto. You know, he made some doomsday predictions, made some moon boy predictions. And then recently he said he's all out. But uh, he made one more statement about how almost all crypto is garbage. <laughs> Um, and Will tweeted this out. I think this kind of kind of explains it all. <laughs> He's been him and Guggenheim has been waiting a long time for approval to add Bitcoin to their funds. Seems like that never happened. That's why he was kind of hoping that Bitcoin would stall or stay under for quite some time. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. All right. Outside of that today, kind of like a. You know, mixed day. You still have some of the good movers from yesterday, meaning all coins like Solana that's still hanging on their green. Ethereum is still hanging around, you know, around 4,100, still very close to their high. But, you know, we have some red overall today because Bitcoin came down a little bit. But you could see like Chainlink, for example, still holding on their gains. Avalanche um, still doing well. VeChain having a good day today. FTX also having a good day for a big fundraise that they had. And overall, it's a mixed day. It's a mixed day. 2.6 trillion market cap. I don't think anyone can complain about that. We just hit 2.6 trillion maybe two days ago. Yesterday, we got up as almost as high as 2.7. But today, it's just a little bit breather, mostly because I think what happened... Uh, because of the, the liquidations and uh, some fud around, you know, that huge flash crash. That's it. That's it. We will get past this. All right, guys, let's do some Q&A. Um, all right, make sure I scroll up. So make sure I don't miss anything. Tiger King says uh, China is looking to ban it again. Enable it, get people in, and then ban again. That's part of their part of their process. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I just find that funny that China would 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 ask for public opinion after kicking out all the miners. Why are they asking for public opinion now, right? Um. All right. Going down. Patrick, what are you talking about? Patrick is like, no stop loss. You will still get liquidated on a dump. Like what? If you're holding, you're not going to get liquidated on anything, Patrick. I don't know what you're talking about. If you're referring to uh, if you're referring to the longs that got liquidated, um, yeah, they will get liquidated for sure. But if you're holding, this is why I tell people never to leverage. If you leverage, uh, it's just, it's just, it's not good. It's not good. Especially if you're utilizing the crazy leverage, like the 10, 20, 50, 100x. I know like FTX and Binance have limited themselves to 20x leverage, but there's still others that offer 100x. Even at a 20x leverage, right? It's just too risky and too many people get burned. Once you get wrecked with leverage, you're done. You're done. There's no recourse. Uh, Gorilla asks, did I get my test? I got it months ago. Yes. Yes. Um... Man, a lot of people tuned in. 12,000 people. Smash up the like, guys. Subscribe to the channel. Welcome. Um, do, 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 do. G All right, hold on. I just got to... Don't forget, Naughty Jackal says, Don't forget, Plan B says 63K for October, which we hit. Right? That's the bottom, you know, toward the end of the month. And we're, we're hovering right around there. But yes, he did say 97K for November. Imagine 100,000 in November. That's going to be crazy. Uh, GBJB says, hey, George, I'm moving to the U.S. for a year this year. Do you have any recommendations on crypto exchanges? 
Um, yeah, I mean, if you're coming to the U.S., you know, all the major ones you probably heard of. Coinbase, Gemini, uh, Voyager, Kraken, you know, those ones, right? But you could still use the ones overseas, like KuCoin, uh, Gate.io, and and uh, Binance.us. There's another one. So there's a lot out there that you could use. Frazzle, yes. If you were using Binance.us, you had a buy order, most likely it would have filled uh, John David John says, please don't use leverage. Our market is transparent, non-regulated. Anyone could see the leverage interest and no one is there to regulate what whales can do. Yep. And I'm going to share something that I heard this morning. I don't know if this is true. Okay. But, but I've heard that these leverage exchanges actually, you know, because, okay, I'm going to step back. Who profits from liquidations? So first of all, think about it, whether you're long or short and you get liquidated, right? You lose, but who wins? Who wins on these liquidations? The exchanges, because they're collecting the fees, regardless if you win or not, you get liquidated or not, they're collecting the fees. So this morning, I've heard some damning news about how some of these exchanges, these leverage exchanges actually pay the people that promote them, right, amount when there's lever when there's uh um when there's liquidations that i've never heard of before i've heard of people collect commission just by referring people to these leverage exchanges now i'm hearing that some of them actually get a cut when there's actually liquidations that happen i'm like that blows my mind right but if you think about it who profits the most from liquidations exchanges so it would not I mean, I could see that happening, but that's major, major, major <laughs> ethically, morally, and legally. That's all bad, right? If that's really true. I heard it. I don't know if that's true uh, officially, but man, that's just, that's just bad. Um, I'm on buy best 16x leverage, liquidation 61k. What is the bottom of this downturn? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it could be where we are right now and turn right back up. It could go a little bit lower, right? Don't play with leverage. Why are you Why are you playing with 16x leverage? You're just asking for trouble, especially if you're asking that question, which means that you're really not a trader, which means you should not be using leverage at all. You know, there's expert traders. I say expert or people pretending to be experts, and they'll tell you exactly, oh, this is the bottom or top, right? And sometimes it comes true, sometimes it doesn't. And if you have, if you are like one of those guys, maybe you want to mess around with leverage. But if you're asking questions like that, it shows that you are not an expert trader and you should not be using leverage. Um, John David, again, you don't need, oh, 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 it just disappeared. You don't need to be so greedy to make money. We're all going to be rich. Bitcoin by $500 by 2028. Just two BDC will get you a millionaire in eight years. I argue, yeah. Yeah, that maybe even just one BTC can make you a millionaire, right? If the if Bitcoin continues this trend right now and gets global adoption and everyone is going to be holding it in the future, right? There's no reason why Bitcoin can't get to a million in the future. Maybe not in eight years, but maybe in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. What's your opinion on adult NFTs like Taboo Token? I'm, I just stay away from it. Just stay away from it. Uh, isn't a small drop just people to no, no, not when it drops to 8,000 exchange, no. Uh, but what we're seeing overall, yes, but not when you have a flash crash down to 8,000 on exchange. That is not normal profit taking. Uh, Rob Ravine, appreciate it. Um, got an opinion on Ripple building UK CBDC. This is officially confirmed by UK itself. It's not only Ripple, Quant, and apparently several other projects. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. But, you know, Stellar was asked to build CBDC or help with Ukraine's um, CBDC. You know, it's like, it's okay. Obviously, it's good attention, but it's not really going to cause a price pump, if that's what you're asking. All right, uh... Philip, I mean, ad shares looks okay to me. It's still relatively new and small. I mean, they've been around for a while, but we'll see. 
we'll see if uh, they they can make it. Um, Crypto Zombie owes me a hundred bucks for pushing Chig Stack. I wonder what happened to Crypto Zombie. Like it's just like one day he just stopped. He just stopped. He tweets every so often, but I'm curious what happened to him because no one seems to know if uh, if something happened to him. So if you guys know, let me know. I'm just curious. Not that I ever talked to him before, but I'm just curious about it. Um, oh man, I'm missing. You guys are sending me too much super chats. I'm trying to get to them. I appreciate it, guys, but bear with me. Um, uh, do you think the time e the uh, e two upgrade is finished? When will we we will miss the pump? I don't. I don't know that. I don't know what you're asking. E2 is now supposed to be pushed back to summer of 2022. So from now to that, that's a long time. Uh, gather polymath. Yeah, it's a security offering, security token token platform. Not something that I like. Kyle, welcome. Thoughts on uh, uh, phantom projects like Spell, Ice, Mim, Stablecoin. Well, Stablecoin is not very interesting. I've never heard of Spell and Ice, so I have to look into them. Um, shout out to Juan and Brian from the Valley. Hey, guys. I think I'm leaving Cardano, George. I feel like it's the slowest project out there. No one's stopping you. No one's stopping you. There are certainly faster moving projects right now. But I'll just warn you, it's the same reason why I didn't buy in Cardano under 10 cents, right? I, I don't pretend like I got in Cardano very, very early and made a, you know millions off of it, right? It was the same reason that I never got into Cardano before because I felt like it never moved, it never finished, and uh, it'll never do anything. And then after it broke 10 cents, it went to $3, okay? So that's, that's the story I'm sharing with you. So you do what you want, um, but... Cardano tends to be like that. Sometimes it just doesn't move. And then, boom, it does. But recently, I got to recognize, yeah, of course, Solana, Avalanche, Terra, there just seems to be so much going on with them. And that's why they keep going up. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's why I just say, have a diversified portfolio. Just have a diversified portfolio. So you don't have to worry about switching from one to another to another. Just have a diversified portfolio. How are you? I'm okay, Carl. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Uh, why Flare Token is not di distributed? I don't know. Flare Token is supposed to be airdrop to XRP holders. It still not has happened yet. I, I don't know what, why it's like that. Uh, Kyle, I don't know what coin that is. Uh, what do you expect the next cycle will develop? Metaverse, identity, gaming, fractionization. They are all re ready to exist. I think gaming is going to be the most popular because that's what most people get could get behind gaming and uh, the addictiveness, the viralness of it. Identity and, and fractionization already is occurring, but you know, a lot of people don't care about it or it's just not really sexy. It's, it's great for a B2B, right? But um, especially like ID services metaverse, that's just a generic term. I don't even really know what that means. It's really part of gaming and NFTs. Uh, how do you expect the Mt. Gox playback to pay out if it come uh, coming months? That's an interesting question. I was reading about it. I was still thinking about it, whether or not, you know, it's going to, well, it's going to be distributed somehow, right? Um, and what those people are going to do with it. Are they all going to just, you know, panic dump on the market? <laughs> Or to go hold them. We don't know. We don't know. And we don't know the exact set date yet either. Uh, do you think El Ramo can make it to the top 20? Uh, it could. But I think it would like more likely hover in the 20s. 20 to 30. Alright. I think that's it. Pappy. Cartesi. Not a fan of it. Just like a, another layer two that exists. There's just so many layer twos out there. So many out there. Thoughts on cashing in a portion of my Roth IRA to add more BDC. Hey, you don't have to do that if you sign up with iTrust Capital. All right? You don't have to actually take it. 
you know, cash it out and then take a hit with taxes and then buy BDC. Check out iTrust Capital. Give them a call. They'll allow you to transfer in and buy crypto with it without dealing with all that nonsense. So there you go. All right, guys, that is it. Uh, you know what? Bitcoin, a little breather from yesterday. But the big thing is that it caught me by surprise. I'm like, wow, another flash crash happened last week. It was on Bitstamp. This week it's on Binance.us. So what it seems like it's happening is the whales are looking for low liquidity on certain exchanges and then utilize that to their benefit, right? So this it happened this morning, flash crashed down to 8,000, right? Caused a lot of fear, caused a lot of stop losses to be enabled. And a lot of people got, you know, got exited. And, and you know what, this morning, because of it, because Bitcoin coming down, a lot of liquidations, long liquidations. So don't be greedy. Don't utilize leverage because not only can you wreck yourself, when you add it all together, it's wrecking the entire community. So don't do it. Just simply buy and hold. Buy and hold. And that is it. Together, we will go far. In the next two months, it's going to be fantastic. So thanks for tuning in. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right? Take care now.